How's it going YouTube? Hobby here. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Cryo Rig H7 CPU cooler. Now I do know this cooler's been out for a while, but I did pick it up on sale recently. And it absolutely, in my opinion, rivals the coolers in this $30 to $40 price range. And I'm talking about the Hyper 212 Evo and a few others. Uh, but this one to me has a few features that stand out. Uh, the asymmetric design, uh, a couple of other features here, the mounting bracket, I really do like that. Uh, but let's take a look at this, uh, what comes in the box. So we do have the cooler, of course, your standard installation guide and product registration information. Two boxes here that contain mounting brackets, thermal compound, screws, etc. A silica gel packet, and that's pretty much it for the box. Very well put together. Taking a look at what comes inside these boxes, uh, the first one does have the thermal compound. It's just a uh, CP7 thermal compound. Uh, sorry for the camera focus there. Couldn't get it to focus properly. And two additional uh, fan adapters if you want to install another 120 millimeter fan for a push-pull configuration. And the backplate here which can be utilized for both AMD and Intel CPUs, as well as the black standoffs and the mounting screws. And that's pretty much it. A look at the cooler itself. Uh, we can see right off the bat, the asymmetric design. It kind of leans back a little bit, giving 100% memory clearance. The 120 millimeter blower style fan. Uh, I do, I'm a big fan of this uh, plastic cover here with the manufacturer logo on top. Uh, it does have that plastic covering over the contact for the CPU and a four pin PWM header. The first step in installing this uh, cooler is to remove the stock CPU brackets. Now this just takes a standard uh, Phillips head screwdriver and once you remove these uh, four screws here and remove the mounting brackets, there is a back plate uh, on the motherboard that'll just essentially just fall out uh, once you remove these screws. This part's pretty straightforward, it's fairly simple. And that back plate will just come right off. There's nothing else holding it in place. The next step in the installation process is to fit these screws uh, through the custom backplate for the H7. Now, this backplate is fitted uh, to fit both A and B and Intel CPU sockets, but for this one, uh, we're using the AM3 Plus socket type, and uh, these four screws just need to be installed in these four corners here. And the easiest method of installation is to flip the motherboard uh, upside down and then just sit this backplate uh, right through the motherboard. The next step is to, uh, of course, flip the motherboard back over and place these four uh, black plastic standoffs on those metal screws. Once those black standoffs are installed, uh, we then want to apply our thermal compound onto the CPU. Now, I just use the P method here uh, just to apply that thermal compound. I don't want to use too much, but of course, you can use any uh, aftermarket thermal compound that you may have. Very important to remove the plastic from the bottom of the CPU cooler. Uh, you don't want to install that uh, with it on. And from here, you can see the installation brackets there. They already come pre-applied, uh, which is really nice. All I'm trying to do here is get those threads uh, seated onto the mounting brackets and then use the plastic uh, black standoffs to kind of go and get the threads started on those mounting brackets. Now, you won't be able to tighten them completely here, uh, but you can get them started. Now, I did remove the fan here just to make installation a little bit easier, uh, but the easiest method to go ahead and tighten down this uh, fan is to flip the motherboard over, and then you'll be able to screw these uh, backplate screws on very nice and snug. Uh, they don't have to be extremely tight, but a really good snug fit going in a cross-cross pattern so that the thermal compound is distributed uh, really well. Really good thermal dissipation there. 
but this process really made it really simple. Much easier than the Cooler Master Hyper 212. Uh, this installation process was A plus in my book, uh, probably second to a Noctua cooler. And one of my favorite features here is the asymmetric design of the tower. It essentially will allow you to install any RAM modules regardless of height. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can have low profile RAM, high profile RAM, and that I feel like is what makes this cooler uh, a really great buy. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.